want one. It doesn't get any better than this. Fishing and foraging for fresh Tassie seafood with my two best mates. Hey guys, look what I got. Look what I got, eh? Oh, holy moly. You went by Ross. Rocks. They look great, don't they? Yeah, fantastic, eh? My first year on the Tasmanian farm, I, I wanted to get as close as I could to the source of my produce. If I wasn't growing it myself, cheers, thanks, mate. I wanted to know the person who grew it. Along the way, I actually had to learn how to farm, which was no small feat for a, a city bloke like me. I, I didn't even know one end of the fence post from the other when I started. Um, but what I found is, with a heap of help from locals and a little bit of help from my mates, Ross and Nick, I managed to muddle through. But there's been a, a couple of surprises along the way. Can you hold Hadley for that? Yeah, sure. Can you take over, Nick? Hey, little oh, yeah, one. Yeah. Hey. The menagerie's grown a little bit on the farm. So I've now got Sadie and my gorgeous boy Hedley to share my small farm dream. Hey, fresh flathead from there. Just from there. As Ross and Nick well know, a growing family changes your perspective a little. Starting out as a small holder with no experience was a risk, one that I was willing to take on my own. But now that I'm sharing my life with Sadie and Hedley, I really want a lot more certainty and security. I used to be a big city food critic, but I gave up that life and moved to a small farm in country Tasmania. I've been learning how to produce my own food so I can know and trust what I eat. But just when I thought I had it all figured out, along comes Sadie, our boy Headley, and responsibility. So now I'm farming for three. How hard can it be? Hedley's not the only newborn. On the farm, they've all been busy. My sheep have performed just like last year, and I've got four new lambs. My milking cow, Maggie's given birth to a boisterous new calf. And as for my chooks, that's Roger. Been with me since the first week, and he does all the girls every single day. But my favourite are the pigs. I started with just two. Castellan and prosciutto. Having two pigs is really just more of an experiment than a business plan. What I'm hoping to do is raise enough free-range pigs to actually supply my market stall. So I've started breeding Wessex saddlebacks. What I want to do is get a lot more pigs on the ground so I can expand the business, put money in the bank and feed my new family. And now, with 17 healthy little piglets, I'm well on my way to the kind of business that might do just that. But nothing about farming ever goes quite to plan. A bit worried about one of the piglets. Oh yeah, yeah, it doesn't look good. Hey Bella. You're okay. Doesn't look good. This little piglet's just been crushed since I fed them this morning, which is only about an hour ago. She had eight live little ones, and then this one's um, been crushed by a 200 kilo sow. I find this this really heartbreaking. It's a uh, it's what I'm learning about. Every time you come out to check them, you're always hoping that, that you're not going to have lost one. And this, every day I don't find a dead pig is, is, is a blessing because um, I've heard of pe you know, pigs crushing five or six out of their litter. Um, but out of this litter of eight, I've lost this little one just this morning.
With a growing free range pig farm, I guess I need to come to terms with these kinds of losses. But I wish there was another way. I really don't want to be burying too many more piglets. These are the kind of challenges I'm going to face as I try to expand my business. Before I can do a lot on my place, I actually want to find out what other people are doing. It's this balance between you know, the, the ethics of what, the way I think animals should be treated and the realities of, of modern farming and actually trying to make money out of, out of farming. I've heard of a mob up north at Mount Noman Farm, the far north of the state. Currently they're doing really good things with free range pigs. It's a five hour drive to get up there, but you know, I reckon it'll be worth the drive. And it sure is. Look at that, what a marvellous sight. This is what I think people imagine as pig farming, or certainly free range pig farming, but even free range, I guess they don't always get access to, to, pasture. to pasture like this. Oh, look at it. Hey, wonderful. Guy Robertson comes from a family of pig farmers, but when it came to setting up his own farm just 18 months ago, he broke the mould and went completely free range. Now he's got about 30 breeding sows and produces over 400 happy little porkers a year. But what I really want to know is how he keeps his piglets safe without resorting to factory farm practices, which I reckon are less than ideal. I've heard of farrowing crates, like a, a way of really confining the sow. Well, what's a what is a farrowing crate? Well, I guess it's a crate where, like, the sow has got limited movement so she can't actually squash the piglets. So they're brought in, like, a couple of days before giving birth and therefore the piglets can have a drink, but she can't roll um, to squash them, so she's sort of confined in that area. But Guy has come up with a much more humane solution. So the, the idea of using a heat lamp and a protected area is that once they've had a feed, um, they'll go back underneath the, the light or the heat, um, and that means when the sow rolls over, she's less likely to roll on top of them. Um, so, that, yeah, we haven't had to use sow stalls and things like that. This is an amazing system, separating the, the, the weak, young, fragile newborn piglets from the mother using a heat lamp. And it doesn't look that complicated, a piece of corrugated iron, um, low enough that the sow can't get through, and then um, a form of heat in the way of a heat lamp on the other side. Um, probably something I can set up at my place. This is something that I could build myself at virtually no cost for my piglets next winter. Best of all, it fits the ethical vision that Guy and I seem to share. A lot of talk about you know criticism of pig farmers, but you know the consumer who's got used to five dollar bacon is actually the the person where the problem lies. So every time I go to a supermarket and see you know meat on special, I think you know what what's been sacrificed to have that meat so cheap. You know, is it animal welfare or is it the, what the farmer's been paid or you know like there's there's a price for a cheap food. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Guy also wants to show me his cartwheel paddock system that he reckons could save me a whole lot of work on the farm. Now that's something I'm definitely keen to check out. So, to, to save time with labour and just to make it easier to feed them, we've developed a cartwheel system so we could drive into the one spot with a bike and then I can just empty the buckets out into the different lots. It also gives you a chance to rotate the paddocks. The simplicity of a system like this, to actually be able to, to feed everything from one central point. I'm pretty lazy, so I like to just be able to park the bike in one spot and I can feed them all in one go. I love this. I love the idea that the pigs come to me instead of me having to go to them. Can I give you a hand? That one goes to that middle lot. Middle lot. Yep. Guy feeds his pigs a mix of local grains combined with chocolate for protein and energy. Pick me pig. I guess they're not watching their waistlines. <sighs> Certainly quietens them down. That's amazing. We just fed, um, I don't know, how many pigs, you reckon? It's about 90, 95 pigs in here. No, 90, 95 pigs in less than five minutes. Absolutely incredible. I reckon with a bit of elbow grease, I can bash up my own version of this in a day or so. Mm -hmm. 
we've got a, a delicacy that we'd like to offer that um, the Czech community don't get to taste very often. And it's a, a pork offal sausage. Oh, you can bring that ball over here. My old pig paddocks are pretty hammered, so I'm keen to whack up the cartwheel system that I saw at Mount Noman. But the side of the hill I was going to move them to is a little rougher than I was imagining. Right, in my head, five minutes ago, this didn't look quite so overgrown. Hey? I've got this real problem that I don't have, like the guy at Mount Noman, that massive open space the freedom to actually just divide up an open space. I've got hilly country creeks, trees everywhere. So I want to run a line here. It's my little driveway entrance. I can put feed bins here and maybe radiate out. One pig paddock, one pig paddock, one pig paddock, one pig paddock. It won't be easy, but my piglets are rapidly outgrowing their old paddocks, so I really need to get this done today. All I need to do is clear a little scrub, whack in a couple of dozen fence posts, and run some electric fence tape. But come midday, I'm a little behind schedule, and Sadie, as always, is the voice of reason. It won't look like um, that one I saw at Mount Noman which is, oh, you should see it, it's just a middle of a paddock, you know, just like a big open square, easy piece of ground with no, no trees, no creeks, no bracken, no blackberries. Where are you going to put a wallow? There's no, I suppose places like that, they'll dig their own they, wallows. They dig their own. And where do you want to put the shelters? Ah, uh, yeah, yep, there. I <laughs> know, oh, it's not very flat, is it? I reckon I can do four out of this, but maybe not today, maybe. You need to get I need two. two today. I need two. Right. But with a little help from Sadie and Headley, I reckon I might just get it done. Can you see? No. Nah. There's a bush <laughs> in your way. Somewhere there. I'll bang these in. Okay. This is a an energizer, so-called energizer. It's a solar. I've got a solar one. It recharges the battery every three seconds or however, however often you set it, it puts an electric charge through the wire. That's pretty much it. I've done in one day, well, one long day, uh, a whole new pig paddock. If you look at this, I've actually got three spaces all divided up, ready to go. I've got a house down there, a trough ready to go for my wieners, um, but I've got market day tomorrow, and the whole point of doing this is to make sure I've got stuff to sell at the market. So I'll go and organise that first. Our stall at Salamanca Markets is where Ross and I make money selling products like French rillettes, pure pork sausage, dry cured bacon, and whatever else we've cooked up that week. Oh, look at that. So that's basically got pork shoulder chunks, pure pork meat, after we salt it for about 12 to 24 hours. I'm getting the ham. I'll just get one lot of Okay, 960 for you. It's 960. Thanks a lot, Thank guys. Thank you. See ya. Looking forward to it. See ya. See you later. See ya. It's going all right so far. I think I've given away more than I've sold. The business is growing steadily, but we're always on the lookout for new opportunities. Hey, mate, have oh, hold of that. Actually, I've got, I've got a business proposition for you. Czech local Rob Rouse is putting on a festival right here in Hobart and wants our help. We've got a, a delicacy that we'd like to offer that um, the Czech community don't get to taste very often, and it's an, a pork offal sausage, using basically nearly all of the offal of, of a pork, Lungs, heart, liver, head. So pretty much everything that we don't use at the moment. Yeah, yeah I'd love to be able to use the head. Is there any price or anything that we're looking at? Or? Uh, $30 a kilo, all right? <laughs> OK, I reckon we'll do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. 30 bucks a kilo for a dish made from our pork offal is too good to pass up. But before we set out to recreate this traditional Czech delicacy, I think we'll need some expert guidance. No worries. Okay. See ya. See ya.
To get us on the right track, Rob takes me to meet Frida Toberman, matriarch of the Hobart Czech community. Nazdravi. 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 To get a recipe for this traditional Czech sausage, but I'm still having trouble getting my tongue around. Jitranitsa. You, you, you've made it before or you know? No, but uh, when, when I was living in the Czech Republic, when I was younger, um, we always killed a pig. And the jitrnice um, are made from all the offal and the things that you normally wouldn't serve up in, in, in any other meal because people were very frugal and they used every part of the pig. So I have a Czech cookbook I'll show you. That looks like a, a well-thumbed and... <laughs> Look, it was published in 1940 and it's got all the ingredients here. Half a kilo of pork liver, pork, pig's That's head. Like, yeah. Is that the whole head? Is it it's the... Um, um, ears and everything? Uh, everything. Make sure you clean it. Scalded. Them. Clean them. So scalded and clean, blanched. Clean the ear, earwax out of it. Oh, right. OK. <laughs> <laughs> 10 grams of pepper. Frida's recipe sounds pretty authentic, but Rob's adamant that she's missing a few vital ingredients. The recipe that I've obtained, I'm fairly certain I've got lungs. I've even got tongue. tongue. I've even got pig tongue. Yum. Does it say that there, Fred? It's definitely not here. It says here, trochu majoránky, štyri stroužky česneku, vepřová střívka a špejle. You're kidding. Yeah. No lung at all. No, no lung at all. I'm certain it should be in the, in the base, you know, the, yes, the, the well, original. Robert, we'll just have to agree to disagree on, on the recipe. So what do you think? Do you think that helped? Uh, I'm just glad you're going to be there, to be honest. <laughs> Ross's farm is nestled on the south end of Bruni Island, and his little commercial kitchen is where we make most of our products. I've still got no idea about the exact recipe, but we've promised to make 15 kilos of sausage, and we've only got a day to do it. Right, we've got the whole pig, bag full of offal, a spare head and some shoulder meat. What we need to do is get this head off straight away. The only problem is uh, I've got three different recipes for this Yitranitsa. Luckily, Rob's here to show me what to do. Ross is here to, to actually do the knife work. Let's get on with it. Head, heart, Lungs, liver, you name it. There's not a part of this pig that's going to go to waste. That's a, wow, that's, that's pretty the term. This is pretty gruesome. The um, all the bits we've got in here and having to break a, a pig's head into bits. Well, let's hopefully it will make something that tastes good. Look at this. I'm not sure that it looks very good. You've got blood floating on the top, a big pool of fat. In there is all the stuff that we've been throwing away. I, I love to use as much of the animal as possible. This, if it works out and tastes great, is a great way to use all of the animal in our little business. As Rob brings in the final ingredients, I'm hoping he knows what to do next. Good. That's the rest of it. Now, I've got to go finish off preparations for the festival. You've got to go? Yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. I um, hope right. you don't mind. I thought you were going to be here all day. Uh, I was, but I just have some few more things to tie up at the festival. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. No worries. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. We'll all call right. you if you have any problems. All right. All right. See all right. Thanks. Great. As the only bloke who knows anything about this sausage heads for the ferry, I'm wishing I'd taken better notes. Yep. Oh, it's a marriage between French pâté and a Tuscan sausage. Yeah. But with time running short, we're going to have to go with gut instinct and hope for the best. We pull the meat off the heads, mince the lot, mix through our bread and add the secret herbs and spices. About that much? Yeah. Then it's finally time to pump out our first sausage. Stop it there. And for a traditional look, they're tied off with fiddly little sticks. Then it's back into the broth to poach. We can just speed them up. Yeah, they'll come up beautifully. All right, so when they float, we know they're cooked, which is good. And 40 minutes later... Ooh. They look risen. They do, don't they? They look so great. Oh, you want to bring that bowl over here and I'll start trying to feed them. I have no idea if these are exactly what Rob and the Czechs are looking for, but this is our first string. Done, cooked. About 17 on there. But we've got our first 
successful poached yitranitsa. They look wonderful. They do look good, don't they? They may look good to us, but what the Czechs will make of them is anybody's guess. We just passed a whole bunch of people who are looking expectantly at us. We have no clue whether this is the, the genuine article or just a dodgy mock-up. Our Yitranitsa is about to be put to the test by the entire Czech community of Hobart, who will be judging our sausages against centuries of tradition. We just passed a whole bunch of people who are looking expectantly at us. We have no clue whether this is the, the genuine article or just a dodgy mock-up. I just hope they don't split when they're grilled. Hey, Rob. Hi. Oh, wow. There you go. This is it. Do you want to have a look in? Oh, I trust you. You do? Get these on nice and quick, eh? Well, there's an enormous number of hungry Czechs waiting in this courtyard. Rob's just pulled the sausages off the grill, so I'm just waiting for them to arrive. <laughs> it's showtime. Okay. okay. And I've still got my doubts about how they're going to stack up. Mm. This tastes like home. Absolutely like home. It's got the smell and the texture and the flavour of everything that reminds me of the Czech Republic. It's beautiful. Oh, wonderful. Absolutely beautiful. Better than we could ever hope for. But what does Frida think? 62 years since Frida ate this sausage. Wow. If we can capture some of that in there, yes. it'll have been a good day. Yes. Did we, did we manage to do that? Yes. Lovely. Right. Lovely? Lovely. Lovely flavour. And for the final word, what's the verdict, Rob? How do you think we did? Well, most people I've spoken to said it's absolutely spot on, and the others have said it's, it's very good. It's very good. So I think you've done an outstanding job. No, no complaints. Yeah. That's good. What do you yeah. think the chances are of us getting people to order it? You saw the reaction. Imagine if we promoted it in a proper way. We could easily do 50 kilos twi twice, a, twice a year. You want more yitinitsa? I'm grabbing a little bit. Come on, you know you want some more. I think I'm about done. It's, it's not European tradition to be done. <laughs> Whoopsie. This has worked out amazingly well. I was dead certain that they were going to explode on the grill. I've been having nightmares for the last couple of days. Both Ross and I have been having nightmares about what would happen to these when we went to, well, when they got cooked today. They held together. It seems like most of the people here either think we've nailed it or we've got at least close. So for a couple of boys who've never been to Czechoslovakia, you know, pretty good job, really. Best of all, I've got a potential new market for a product made from the stuff that doesn't cost us anything. Now that's good business. It's a good touch. What happened to the goulash? Finally, I've got time to put my piglets into their new paddocks. I'll be able to rotate them to fresh ground to let the pasture recover. And I can feed them all from the one point. There you go, that one. Look at that bunch of happy pigs. Magnificent place for them to, to wander around. They're cleaning it up for me and they're also finding heaps of food for themselves. Lots of new capacity on the farm. To, to actually increase the numbers. It's all going good. There's a lot more work to be done if I'm going to turn my little farm into a successful business. But this feels like a great start. And it's already giving me just a little more time to focus on some of my other hungry mouths. It's really yummy. <laughs> Driving Wagyu beef in Tassie's rugged northwest. There's 200 heads we're taking across today. And then we serve it up in a feast to be remembered. Thank you so much for coming to this wonderful paddock event that we've, we've organised for you. That is regional cuisine at its heart. <laughs>